this week on the Spotlight, we revisit Jose Abreu because he's an interesting guy who's beating the crap out of the ball. Robin Ventura and his third year as manager. Is he getting the job done? We'll look at that. Then, Tyler Flowers, an up and down year, part two of his interview as he addresses that. Then we flash back. We go back about eight years when that guy was a prominent bull this week. Check out my website, Benkowski.com, for my weekly article and up-to-the-minute trivia sites. From wherever Chicago sports teams are making news, this is the 25th year of the Lansing Floral Sports Spotlight. Flowers for every imaginable occasion at Lansing Floral Shop. Call them at 708-474-1212. They deliver. You've got to get the Calabria Imports. That's where I go for Italian food, deli food. Mention this TV ad and get 10% off catering and sandwiches. It's at 1905 West 103rd Street. They have great stuff, and you should get it at Calabria Imports. Wax on, wax off. Great salon and spa. Haircuts for men, women, head to toe, nails. 312-226-1473. With a 30-year Southwest Side tradition, Huckfin is open 24 hours to serve you with great breakfasts like the Becky Thatcher, soups, great lunches, one-third pound burgers, clubs, and much more. Dinners from seafood to steaks to pasta, great donuts, and ice creams. With three locations at Archer and Damon, 67th and Pulaski, and 105th and Cicero, stop in today. You know Huck Finn is open. The T-Wax Company does real estate investments. They want you to buy Chicagoland properties, providing profit opportunities since 1985. Call my friend Mr. Thomas at 773-456-3057. Make some money. Call 773-456-3057. Union Park Bar and Grill. Open at 11 a.m. daily. Huge full bar, tons of screens, great sandwiches and appetizers, great staff, a parking lot, daily specials, always fun at Jackson and Racine. Every time I go to Union Park, I have a great time. So go there, Jackson and Racine, lunch, dinner, you name it. Lisa Davis Insurance and Tax Services at 107th and Western specializes in rollovers, tax recovery, tax resolution. They have insurance, auto, home, life, and business. You can call them at 773-873-8977. Lisa Davis for all your financial services. Amelia's Bar and Grill. Open for lunch and dinner daily at 46th and Halsted. Le Mode Cerdo. Portrero and Mar. Ceviche al Limon. Salmon al Carbon. New cocktail menu. Margaritas, martinis, and sangria. Great stuff at Amelia's Bar and Grill. 46th and Halsted. You'll be glad you went. We're back on the spotlight, and we're talking Jose Abreu again, and why not? Talk about a personal highlight reel for the White Sox 2014 season. He's been it, month after month after month. And now taking it to a new level, uh, as in early August, he pushed his batting average over 300 to go along with those other fine uh, power stats, and you'll be seeing them as the interview progresses but just a, a remarkable job of poise and consistency playing in a much different arena than uh, the Cuban baseball that he played in the past. We're talking about the greatest baseball players in the world and pitchers, m most notably, that he faces day in, day out and continues to solve them and adjust to them, although he's kind of low-key about the kind of adjustments he makes. In this installment of Jose Abreu, he was asked if he watches video of himself to try to improve from at bat to at bat. Yo lo hago todos los días. Los días cuando yo me levanto, todos los días, cada vez que tengo la oportunidad, lo hago. Ver el video porque es la única manera que uno puede mejorar los errores que 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 tenemos en cada partido y eso lo hago día a día para para ser mejor cada día. I do it every day, you know, I do it in the mornings, you know, when I wake up, you know, I watch myself, you know, uh, the videos, you know, and I watch the picture that I'm going to face and all that stuff so I can continue to, continue to uh, get better. Yeah. His batting average has come up over the last month. To what does he attribute that to? Maybe the walks are up a little bit more too. 
tu averaje últimamente ha subido bastante, ¿verdad? Eh, además de eso también este, la base por gol han subido bastante. ¿A qué le das tributo tú? ¿A qué le das crédito tú? No, a la paciencia, yo creo que eh, ahí está la clave, la paciencia y, y tirarle a la, eh, eh, lo menos posible los picheos malos y eso es lo que eh, hemos tenido los resultados ahorita mismo de, de la averaje tan alta y la base por gol. I definitely give credit to the, you know, being more patient, being more patient at the plate, you know, uh, swinging the better pitches, you know, and, uh, and have that plate. This, we're getting late in the year, and this is the point where a lot of rookies start to maybe get tired because they haven't been through a long season. Can you ask me if he's still feeling physically strong at this point? Usualmente dice en este tiempo ya al final casi de la temporada, verdad. Usualmente los, los peloteros novatos y eso comienzan a sentir cansancio. ¿Cómo te sientes tú eh, llegando ya a los últimos meses de, de la temporada? No, me siento muy bien. Yo, yo me siento muy contento con lo, con, con lo que me ha hecho hasta, hasta ahora y eh, estamos haciendo un plan lo mismo que estamos haciendo eh, lo que hicimos en la primera parte. Ahora nos estamos enfocando más y estamos haciendo me, mejor eh, mejor el físico porque eh, se, se supone y se habla que que esta parte de la temporada es, es bien cansona para, para la gente que no conoce este gol y es lo que estoy haciendo, eh, enfocándome en la parte física que es para mí lo más importante ahora mismo. I feel very good right now. I feel very good and uh, and also, you know, I have been also preparing, you know, physically for this because uh, I have been told, you know, that uh, this is the uh, the most difficult part of the season. So, you know, I've been training for it, you know, and I feel very good right now. We talk about the, the walks, you know, the increased walks and stuff. Was being paid more patient important to him? I mean, he was hitting, he's been hitting so well all season. Was that an important thing you wanted to focus on? Hablando sobre la base por bolas y eso, verdad, y, y tú sobre, dijiste sobre la paciencia tuya en, en la zona de bateo y eso. Eso es algo que ha sido importante para ti. Tener sí. un poco más de paciencia porque cuando al principio tú estabas siendo bien agresivo, estabas bateando bien también. Sí, sí, yo creo que eso ha sido bien importante para, para uno en particular. Yo creo que la paciencia de Jon eh, vale mucho y, y créame que cada vez que tengas la paciencia de Jon vas a tener los resultados que de verdad tú quieres y, y es lo que ahorita mismo eh, o sea, me está pasando. Sí, para mí ha sido muy bueno. The more patient I am, you know, the better hits I get, you know, and the better uh, counts I get to hit. With 50 games left, the White Sox are about six games out of a playoff spot. Does he think the White Sox can pass six teams and get into the playoffs? Con 50, 60 juegos que quedan todavía, 50 juegos que quedan. Eh, y nosotros los White Sox estamos más o menos a seis juegos, ¿verdad? De, de quizás entrar a un playoff. ¿Tú piensas que el equipo tiene la oportunidad de entrar al playoff? Sí, cada vez que el juego, eh, cada vez que jugamos un, el, el juego que sea, tenemos posibilidad. Yo creo que... Eh, numéricamente lo tenemos y, y yo creo que, que tenemos que luchar cada día para, para, para ir obteniendo los resultados que, que, que de verdad queremos como equipo y yo creo que si nos enfocamos y, y, y todos eh, jalamos por la misma parte yo creo que vamos a tener los resultados que de verdad queremos. Sí, yes, definitivamente. We, we still have a chance, you know, and uh, eh, you know, if we have to concentrate on working as a team, you know, which is the the most important thing here, but we still have a chance, you know, we can, there's no doubt that we can still, you know, still make it, but, but we got to work together as a team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Muchas gracias. You've got to get to Lansing Floral Shop. Open at 8 a.m. daily. Besides a great array of live flowers, they have custom silks, Bridgewater candles. They want you to plan your parties early at a wide delivery area. They're located at 3420 Ridge Road in Lansing, or you can call 708-474-1212. Weddings, funerals, birthdays, anniversaries, and guys, try the no reason flower. Believe me, it works. Lansing Floral Shop. Give them a call, 708-474-1212. You should get to the Cove, where my trivia game takes place on Wednesdays, August 27th at 8 p.m. Great people, great game, 1750 East 55th Street, right by the lake there. So check it out at the Cove, Benkowski Trivia, August 27th, 8 p.m. Cornelio's Mobile Auto Glass. They come to you. You call them at 773-908-6081. Lowest prices, new and used. Open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. They'll do your windshield, back window, or sides. They did a great job for me. They'll do a great job for you and you'll be amazed at how quickly they come in and finish it up. Cornelio's Mobile Auto Glass. 
Nuevo Leon for the best Mexican cuisine since 1962. Serving every day from 7 a.m. to midnight, conveniently located 1515 West 18th Street, just a block east of Ashland in Chicago. Of course, they have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and a wide range of menu items. Everything from steak, seafood, to breakfast, to chicken, pork, dine-in, carry-out, tacos, enchiladas, everything you can imagine, and great quality in Nuevo Leon, 1515 West 18. We're back on the spotlight. It's time to talk managing. Robin Ventura is in year number three of his time with the White Sox as a major league manager. In year one, his team was in contention all year and then kind of blew up in the last couple weeks. Last year, they were never in it. And it was a downer of a year with 99 losses. This year, quite a perk up. Uh, some great new faces led by Jose Abreu and uh, some improvement in the pitching staff, but with a huge asterisk, the bullpen. So Robin fields a bunch of questions about Abreu, relievers, what they're going to do next. And uh, as usual, all on a very cool, even keel. Robin was asked if what happens if several bullpen guys pitch? What is the next situation the next day? Same situation arises. It's going to be the same order again. I, well, we haven't really had the same order, uh, you know, necessarily. I mean, sometimes we'll use Belly in the sixth. Sometimes we've used him in the eighth. Um, you know, sometimes we've used Guerra in the sixth. And sometimes we've used him in the eighth. But, uh, you know, I don't think yesterday really would have mattered which one. So... At, at that point, we're going to erase the slate, and when we see a situation arise, and then you go from there and you figure out who you're going to use on, you know, usage and, and how much guys were used yesterday. And I think you know, getting beat around yesterday, guys' pitch counts are up, and you got to figure out a way to maneuver around it. You got 50 games left, and you're still mathematically alive. Uh, I know you got to climb over some teams, but uh, is this something you think your team can do? Well, we're going to take it one day at a time. I'm not going to sit here and claim we're going to the playoffs, but, you know, especially after a day like yesterday. So, you know, for us, we just focus on every day. You try and win that day, and at the end of the year, if you're in it, you're in it. But anytime you sit here and start making proclamations that you're going to make the playoffs or anything else, the focus goes off of what you should be doing. And for us, it's going to be focused on today trying to beat the Texas Rangers. You brought Clayto back up. Yeah. What are the reports about how he's been throwing and what do you think he can add? He's been throwing great. And, um, you know, I think after yesterday you need a bullpen arm. And, um, you know, he's been the best guy down there. And then they said by far that he's been throwing it the best. And we've seen some pretty good stuff from him early, even in spring training. And, um, you know, the velocity and, and the power that he has, he just he got to a, a point where location wasn't necessarily uh, there. So right now they say he's throwing great. How's Avi doing? Avi's doing good. They, they got x-rays. They were negative, and um, you know, he, sh he should be available the next day. How about Putnam? Is he uh, going to be on track to come he's back? He's on track he right now. He's uh, thrown tomorrow, uh, so he'll be available. He should be available when his time's up and, and coming off the DL, So unless there's a setback. But he's thrown tomorrow, uh, I believe, in Charlotte. That, uh, he'll get an inning in there and see what he's see what he feels like. Are you counting the days for Putnam and Lindstrom to, to get back here? No, I mean you you know you know that they're capable guys and and we've done well when they've been in there. So yeah, I mean there is a part of you want your full uh, roster of guys that are out there and available and, and healthy. So they, they you know you get those guys back, they're not only good but you know they they've had a pretty good clean slate of uh, getting some rest. This bullpen thing. It seems like it's been going on ever since Lindstrom went down. You got everybody kind of got moved up, and they've been out of sorts. I mean, is that is that fair to say that it's kind of been wobbling along? Well, I think anytime you do, Jake's been pretty consistent. So you know, you get him that's been mostly in the ninth inning. Well, earlier he was seventh or eighth, and, and having that spot. So anytime you start moving guys around, it can get a little iffy. If you know one guy's got the hot hand, but he, he's not getting in there quite as much because you can't get to him. And, it looks different, so you know. Hopefully, we can get back to that point where everybody 
kind of slides back into where they were because there was a little, nice little stretch there where you know when uh, Putnam got here, they, they had a nice run. With Nate out next year, do you guys need to find a strikeout guy for next year in this offseason? I think you always want a strikeout guy. Well, Nate Nate's uh, a, a different breed. I mean, he, he throws hard. Um, you know, he, he's put in some big innings for us in, in big spots in the last couple of years. So I don't know if you can necessarily just point at somebody and say they're going to be the Nate guy. But, it, you know, you're, you're missing a big piece when, uh, you know, a power arm like Nate's not available in your bullpen. Thank you. Thank you. With a 30-year Southwest Side tradition, Huck Finn is open 24 hours to serve you with great breakfasts like the Becky Thatcher, soups, great lunches, one-third pound burgers, clubs, and much more. Dinners from seafood to steaks to pasta, great donuts, and ice creams. With three locations at Archer and Damon, 67th and Pulaski, and 105th and Cicero, stop in today. You know Huck Finn is open. Go play at Red Shoes Billiards, 12009 South Pulaski in Austin, featuring 16 Brunswick Gold Crown pool tables, drop fluorescent lighting fixtures, and the fabulous grade of cloth. Call 708-388-3700. And now video gaming is available at Red Shoes from open till close. And don't forget, the Illinois Lottery 2. That's Red Shoe Billiards, 12009 South Pulaski. Little Frank's Pizzeria and Bar, easy to reach, 6353 West 79th Street. On Thursdays, Buck 50, Miller and Old Style. Trivia, alternate Thursdays at 8 p.m. They have $15 large pizza and pitcher, all day, every day. Little Frank's on 79th. Perfect Pitch Auto Repair at 108th and Kedzie. Thus, tune-ups, transmission, AC service, engine repair, tire repair, oil changes, and emission system repair. They're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., and they've done a great job for me. Perfect Pitch Auto Repair at 108th and Kedzie. you got to get to Matt Anthony's Bar and Grill. Great pizza, drinks, and more. Private party room available and Benkowski Trivia Friday, August 15th and 29th at 6 p.m. They're right at 3350 West 47th Street. Easy to reach. Good times at Matt Anthony's. Bar and Grill. We're back on the spotlight, and we're talking with Tyler Flowers. It's part two. I don't remember every question, so I'll just throw it to myself. Question I want to ask, it. and it is, I mean, if there's a unifying theme to some of the games that have gotten away, it, it, I'm thinking that maybe it's when the young pitchers are trying to be too fine, you know, and they're nibbling, 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 and everything, all the nibbling seems to be down. And I know nobody wants to give up a home run, but I, I think maybe using the strike zone up and down at times can be helpful. And maybe they should be less afraid to throw a high strike. Yeah, you know, and I think we're seeing that more from maybe some of the newer guys or younger guys. And uh, I think if you look back over the course of the season thus far, all those guys have made strides in certain areas. Uh, I'd say the guys with maybe a little bit higher velocity, we've adapted to kind of elevating in the zone more so than trying to paint inside or paint away. Uh, you know, you can elevate with high velocity and then all of a sudden you throw some off speed in there. It really changes the feel for a hitter. Uh, just as guys with a little less velocity, um, sometimes you have to go a little bit more in and out and then change speeds in addition to that. So uh, we're all kind of learning together as a whole. And, uh, you know, I think some of these younger guys getting this experience and going through some adversity and then coming back and having some success, uh, you know, they're taking note of how they're doing that. And I think that's just going to make this team that much better in the future. Jake has seemingly really, you know, kind of found it a little bit. It seems like uh, his consistency is there uh, on a pretty good basis. Yeah, he's doing a great job. Uh, it's a guy with a great personality, uh, great makeup, not just pitching-wise, but, uh, but as an individual. Um, his attitude and demeanor out there, I think, does a lot for him. Um, and it especially does a lot since he's coming in these situations, closing games. Uh, extremely competitive, not afraid of contact. Obviously, his stuff speaks for itself. Uh, heavy sink, high velocity. Um, and we're doing a good job implementing off-speed pitches, too. Don't let the guys take advantage of you know, this guy with a really good fastball. Every once in a while, drop some off-speed early, give him something else to think about. Yeah, um, to wrap up, you know, as you go into the final six weeks or so, I mean, you've been through a couple pennant races, and so you know the drill. What 
What makes you think that uh, this, this late inning situation can right itself and you guys can start knocking off some of the teams that you need to knock off? Um, you know, I think just kind of what we touched on a second ago, you know, the, the course of time, the course of games, the experience that these guys are getting. Um, you know, obviously we're coming off a tough one yesterday, but you push that aside. Um, I think these guys have definitely improved over the season. And uh, everybody sees that, you know, the fans probably sometimes aren't too happy about it in certain aspects. Um, but you got to look at everything as a whole, as a whole group. And uh, I think each guy has continued to get better. And, and we're working every day to try and figure out ways that even the really, really good guys can get a little bit better. Um, but, you know, it all just comes down to consistency. Uh, consistency, you know, the character, the makeup of the guys, the confidence goes a long way uh, in all aspects of baseball, but especially pitching. Um, just encourage these guys to pound the zone, trust their stuff, and you know, defense is doing a good job behind them. You know, all those kind of things kind of ease a little bit of tension for some of the younger guys and, and help them trust their stuff a little bit more. Well, as you continue to play psychologist, and I, and I can tell that you you you, you, you embrace it. Um, one, one thing that you can bounce off them, the 2005 World Series champion White Sox had, was around their third closer when they were winning it all. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah it, took them, it took them a couple guys and yeah. before they settled on Bobby Jenks. Not a bad guy to settle on. Yeah, yeah, Bobby did uh, extremely well during his time here. Um, yeah, it just goes to show you. I, you know, I don't think any championship team ends up with the same guys. You know, that never happens. It's always, you know, some guys coming up from AAA, a couple guys in the trade yep. here and there, guys stepping up in situations that they weren't expected to step up into. And I think we've had a couple of those things happen. Uh, we just need to get a couple more and, and continue to be consistent. All right, well, keep, uh, keep being upbeat for them. Sure. And they will follow your lead. Appreciate it. We'll be back. Thank you. I eat on the pasta twice just... Salerno's Restaurant and Pizzeria at Grand and Racine is the place to go before United Center Pavilion, Bulls, Hawks, Cubs and Sox too. Dine in or carry out with great family recipes, including homemade pastas, steaks, seafood, a great fun bar area. Meet people. Have a tremendous time at Salerno's Restaurant and Pizzeria Grand and Racine. You'll find a great variety of foods for you to enjoy at Salerno's. Angel Perfect pitch auto repair at what 108th and Kedzie is great. Tune-ups, transmissions, AC service, engine repair, tire repair, oil changes. They're open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. They do a great job for me, and they'll do a great job for you. They're quick, and they don't charge an arm and a leg. Perfect pitch auto repair, 108th and Kedzie. You've got to get to Shelton Fireworks, the world's largest warehouse, off Interstate 94, exit 22B in Porter, Indiana. Row after row of the best fireworks anywhere, from the little ones to the grand finales that'll end your show. Birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, in addition to the 4th of July, just get over there to Shelton Fireworks now. Then you can reload by the time summer comes. Shelton Fireworks, I-94, exit 22B in Portage. Reggie's is a great place with tons of music, interesting people and staff, great food and drink at 21st and State. And amongst the cool things they have, Benkowski Trivia. All shows are now Monday at 6 p.m. Reggie's, 21st and State, a fun place. You gotta get to Lindy's Gertie's. Great foods like burgers, hot dogs, salads, chicken, steak, kids menu, and shakes, floats, soft serve, perfect for the season. 110th and Kedzie in Chicago. I go there, you should go there. Lindy's Gertie's. Great food, snacks, you name it. Uh, the Bulls are at an extreme hot point in their season. Uh, it's great to have home cooking. And uh, Ben, uh, as I was just telling you moments ago, uh, your color commentator, Bill Wennington, had singled you out for uh, doing a lot to create your own own shots and taking the ball to the rack, which is an important part of uh, any any player's game. Yeah, you know, um, it's important to be, be aggressive and, you know, try and get things going, you know, um, inside out, you know. Um, last couple of years of my career, you know, I was known mainly as a three-point shooter, so I just want to mix it up and, and try and um, prove my overall game. When Do you find that people are, are, are overplaying a little bit on the outer edge and then you can kind of, like, make that judgment and just uh, that's when you take off to the hoop? Um, yeah, I'm finding, you know, um, I can give them a little hesitation, they'll shot fake and they'll bite for it most times, so it's got to continue to use that in my favor, you know. Um, more years you get in this league, you know, the wiser and you know, smarter you have to get. So that's just something I'm trying to do every game. 
You know, we've heard a lot, especially before the season started, about how your team had to come together with all the new players. Uh, how much of that is the key to this recent success, and how much is other things? Um, I think I think uh, the key to the, the key to our, you know um, recent you know seven game winning streak is you know um, guys are coming together. The chemistry is getting better. You know um, we're playing playing better defense, you know more consistently. And um, I think you know us being at home is a big part of it too. You know guys get to play you know in their comfort level. You know, in the beginning of the season we had mainly away games, so you know it's good to be at home. How, how do you personally react to feeding off the fans? Seems like uh, you'll hit a couple of shots in a row, and it gets pretty nuts in here. Oh yeah, yeah, this is the best place to play for me, you know. Um, in the NBA, you know, we have great, great fans, and you know, I think um, they're like our sixth man. They help us, you know, get going a lot of nights. Another interesting thing I noticed that, you know, earlier in your Bulls, very early in your Bulls career, you were you were doing some commercials and you were you know doing promotional announcement and you were seen on TV a lot. So it's you're you're easily the most recognizable you know of of uh, what you would call the new Bulls. I guess so. You know, um, I was fortunate enough to you know get those opportunities. You know, um, but you know a lot of times those things only come with with play. You know, and win. So. We have to just continue to, you know, play well as a team and, you know, try and win as many games as we can and, you know, that type of stuff will happen for all the players. With, with all the good that has occurred in the last couple of weeks, what, what kind of thing, what, what thing do you think about that you would like the team to really continue to improve on that, that isn't quite there yet? Um, just our help defense, you know, I think um, we're decent right now, but there's still a lot of room for improvement, you know, um, when one guy gets beat, you know, um, there has to be second and third efforts made for us to be, you know, the caliber team we want to be, and that's something that, you know, we're steadily, you know, trying to improve on, you know, in our games and in all the practices. Any holiday wishes for the fans in TV Land? Um, just wish all the fans, you know, a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and um, a lot of wins for Bulls. <laughs> that's good. We're talking to Scott Skiles, and the first question of this section has to do with Kevin Garnett, who was in town to beat the Bulls with the T Wolves the other night. And he was asked about Garnett not being the kind of guy who you have to change your defense for. That there are very few players in the league who you change your defense to adjust to. And Skiles was asked, what about Garnett as one of those guys? He isn't really one of those guys, is he? No, you know, I, um, I mean, I, I think he's, uh, I mean, he's, like I said, he's, he's one of the greatest players ever. I don't. I mean, I don't. Yeah, um, negatively, just, yeah you know, right. That he's, he's more maybe right, like right. I mean, yeah, he's he's never led the league in scoring or anything like that. But uh, you know, as far as double doubles and passing the ball, and I've I, uh, you know, he's always an all defensive type player uh, every year. He's good on the ball. He's good off the ball. Uh, so I mean, he just he's just a very well rounded player. It's kind of the last few weeks when, or last few games when Lou and Noach have really kind of taken over.